Hiya, Kiki here, and today I am going to give you kind of a sneak peek into Code.org's Unplugged Lessons for Course 3 of Code Studio. Uh, these are some great lessons. They get a little intense, so just a quick sneak peek will give you a heads up on how to teach them or how to incorporate them into your classroom. The first unplugged lesson in course three is called computational thinking. This lesson gets frustrating, but it's supposed to. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to break down complicated problems and turn them into something a little bit easier. This lesson starts off by highlighting to your students how many difficult problems there are in the world and how it's possible to solve those problems even if no one has taught you how to. We recommend summing up all the numbers from 1 to 200 in 30 seconds or less in your head. This may seem difficult for fourth and fifth graders and it is. It's difficult for some adults and the temptation is to try and make that problem easier but if you do that you aren't getting the point across. The point is not, oh, we're doing it. it we're going to succeed automatically first time. The point is there are some problems in this world that are difficult. And you may think they're so hard that you're going to give up before you even try. And we want to help discourage that thinking. We want people to try, even if they're going to fail. Trying and failing is better than giving up before you even start. We set them on this task. And it's okay to be really uh, playful around the task, you don't, you're not trying to mortify them. You're trying to give them something to think about. So you might say something like, all right, we're going to start out now with a little warm-up problem. I want all of you to add up all the numbers between 1 and 200. 30 seconds or less. Ready? Oh, and it has to be in your head. Go! And then watch your class watch how they react to things. Some may be giving it a try. Others may get a little weepy and you'll have to encourage them. It's okay. It just, just give it a shot. What would you do first? But 30 seconds is going to go by pretty quickly while your class is perplexed. Once that time has run out, you ask, how many of you got the answer? There may be one or two that claim to have gotten the answer. At a fourth and fifth grade level, it's rare that someone will. But then you ask, okay, how many of you thought it was such a hard problem you didn't even try? And that's going to give you a clue what you're working with. Now, once you've got all of that kind of out of the way, you can talk to them about their approach. How did you approach the problem? What did you realize? What did you think about? And then show them the pattern in that problem. The reason we use 1 to 200 is because 200 divided in half is 100. And 100 is easy to multiply by. And you may remember the equation for figuring out a sum of numbers. So you just teach them that the 200 plus the 1 is 201. And 199 plus 2 is 201. And 198 plus 3 is 201. And you keep showing them that pattern until eventually they see that you just have a hundred sets of 201. And certainly they can multiply 201 by a hundred in their head. So then they get the answer. And you've just shown them that there are easier ways to figure out problems if they just take it apart, look for some patterns, uh, make a general answer that works for something and then they can put it all together into an algorithm to solve other problems. So then you can give them the same thing but to 2,000 and then ask them, did you ever think you'd be able to sum all the numbers from 1 to 2,000 in your head under 30 seconds? And it should be something that they're able to do after they get a little bit of practice. That may seem like a lesson in and of itself and it can be but it's not. There's still more lesson to go. After this we get to play a game. Maybe it's kind of a reward for the torture we put them through, but it is a lot of fun. And you let them know we're going to use those same steps to computational thinking. We're going to use the decomposition, we're going to use the pattern matching, the abstraction, and then we're going to put it all together in an algorithm. 
You don't have to have defined these terms yet, but if you find it handy to define them as you're doing them, you're welcome to. Often in these lessons, I will save the definition of terms until after we've used them so that they are ready to really understand what it is. Now they get to play a game. The game that we're playing doesn't have any instructions and you're not gonna give them the instructions. All you're gonna do is let them know that there are three user experiences that they need to read through. They need to figure out what's the same, pattern match, and they need to figure out what's different and abstract away the differences so they can come up with a rule that works for the game that they must have played. Then they get to play that game using the same rule. That means it's important that the students do this in a group. So have them work together to find the similarities, to find the differences, and once they've figured out how to play the game, have them write down their set of rules for how to play. Then let them go right into actually playing. Give them some dice, let them figure out how to play it themselves, have a few laughs, have a few giggles, and at the end, you can share with everybody, what did your game come out looking like? What did your game come out looking like? It isn't important if everybody's game looks the same. That's something that teachers need to understand. If every single person has a different rule for how to play the game, that's fine. The point is that, that they took an experience, they took a big problem, they broke it down, they figured out a solution that worked. Not that everyone's solution is identical. That's computational thinking. It is a hefty lesson, but it's a fantastic lesson. Those ideas in computational thinking are really the root of computer science. And if your students understand decomposition, pattern matching, abstraction, and algorithms, they're gonna have a much better chance at doing well in everything for the rest of their lives, not just computer science.